In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect your Typeform with your CRM system. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate it on HubSpot. And we are also going to let AI summarize the message that the lead is leaving on our form. So then either you or your sales team can have it easier and get a quick summary about what the lead or prospect is asking about. Firstly, let's have a look at the type form. So it's going to be a basic contact us form where we are collecting as much information as possible about our prospect or lead. And then at the end, the prospect can ask any question and get in touch with our sales team. So the first question looks like this. We have a full name, then we have email address. We are also asking about the phone number. Then we are asking about the country. So this is going to be the location of the company. In our CRM system, we also want to get the company name, the size of the company the industry over here and then the last question is where they can actually leave the message to ask anything about our business just so you get an idea you can also create the form with any other provider not just type form in this case you can also create it directly with hubspot so here i created a contact us form which basically has very similar information and then at the end the lead can actually leave the message all right so let's go to zapier and let's start building our workflow we are firstly going to start with our trigger and and in this case, we want to search for type form. And then we are going to set up our event. In this case, we have just one and it's a new entry. We're going to continue. You then want to connect your type form account. And it's simple as logging in with your credentials. I'm going to continue and then we want to set up our trigger. In this case, we have created just one form. So I have this lead collection form that I have just shown you. So I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to continue and now make sure to submit a test lead. I have already done that and then you can test this trigger. So I'm going to do it right now. And as you can see, the test was successful. So we got all the responses under one variable over here. But if you scroll down, you can see the type form also allows you to separate them and have them in different variables. And this is crucial because we want to put them into our CRM system like that. In this case, you can see that this is the message that we submitted. Hi, I'm interested in your service. I would like to know more about Popups Land and also the pricing options you offer. Thank you, Thomas. So it's a simple contact us form where we are asking about more information. All right, we are going to continue with the selected record. Now we want to use a built-in app called Formatter by Zapier. So I'm going to search for it. We are going to use this because as you have seen that the first question contains the full name, but we want to split those answers answers into the first name and last name. This is how we want to have them stored in our CRM, in this case, HubSpot. So I'm going to choose the event. And in this case, you want to choose text. We are going to continue. And then in transform, you want to search for split text and choose that one. And then in the input, you right now have the options to choose the variables from type form. So you simply want to find the variable that has the full name. And in this case, it's our first question. Welcome, what's your full name? So I'm going to choose this one. Then in the separator, you can leave it blank because as you can see here, the default is going to be a space. And then segment index, which is very important one, you want to choose all as separate fields. I'm going to then continue. And we're going to test this, whether it's going to split the name. I'm going to test this step. And yeah, it works. We have both of them, the first name and last name, and we have split them into two different variables. All right, so in our second action, we are going to use ChatGPT. And the ChatGPT blog is going to be used to summarize the message that comes with the lead form. So sometimes leads and prospects can leave a lot of information and they can leave long messages. So then it's going to be way easier if we can create a new column inside our HubSpot, where we are going to have a quick summary for us or for our sales team to quickly know what the lead is asking about. So I'm going to search for ChatGPT. In the event section, we want to choose conversation. We are going to continue. I've already connected my ChatGPT account. If you want to know how you can quickly do that, I'm gonna link a video down below. I'm gonna continue. And then we want to set up more information about our action. And for this, just to save time, I'm going to go inside my database where I store all my AI automations with all the apps, triggers, steps, as well as the exact ChatGPT prompts. So I'm going to try to replicate this one which is the type form to HubSpot. And we are right now on the third app, ChatGPT. We have done already the trigger. And then we are right now at the ChatGPT block. So this one includes my prompt. So I can just copy this one. And I'm going to paste it inside the user message. That is where you put your prompts. So firstly, we are setting up context parameter where we want to let ChatGPT know what's happening. So the results are going to be higher quality. You write down inquiry summaries from prospects. And then we are setting up a second parameter over here, message to summary 
summarize. And here's where the automation is happening. We're going to go back to our trigger, which includes all the data about our lead. So we are going to go to the type form and we are going to search for the message question. And that is over here, type your message. And then lastly, I'm writing down my prompt. Please summarize a message. Use a method of extreme TLDR generation, a new form of extreme summarization for paragraphs. TLDR generation involves high source compression, removes stop words and summarizes the paragraph whilst retaining meaning. The result is the shortest possible summary that retains all of the original meaning and context of the paragraph. And so you can see we are setting up context, then message, and then we are writing down our prompt. If you want to know how you can structure these prompts with different parameters, I have put together a totally free Node.js resource that you can get in the first thing in the description down below. It's totally for free. And as I am aware, it has helped a lot of people. All right, so we are going to continue with our model. In this case, because we are just summarizing a text, it will be enough to use a GPT 3.5, which is a cheaper option. But if you want, you can up your model to GPT 4. In this case, I'm just going to use the GPT 3.5 Turbo. You definitely want to always set up your memory key to keep the output consistent. So I'm going to write down inquiry summary. You can write anything here. It can be numbers, text, whatever. I go more in depth in memory key in other videos. So make sure to check them out. And then in the other settings, username, assistant name, assistant instructions, you can leave those as they are. Maybe you can tweak them if you want and feel free to experiment to maybe get better results. But right now, because we're just summarizing text, it is sufficient to leave them as they are. Max tokens, you can leave at 250 and then temperature and top P, you can also leave it as it is on the default values. I have separate videos about all of those and what they mean, where I explain it in very simple terms. So I'm going to link those videos down below as well. But overall, you can leave it as it is and we can continue. And right now we are going to test this, whether it's going to summarize our message. Now remember our message is this. Hi, I'm interested in your service. I would like to know more about Pop-Ups Land and also the pricing options you offer. Thank you, Thomas. We are going to test this step. The test was successful. We got a green confirmation. So we can scroll down and then under the response content, you can find the output over here. Thomas wants information about Pop-Ups Land service and pricing options. So this is very good because if the message was too long, it would be very helpful for yourself or for your sales team to immediately know what the inquiry is about. All right, so in our third action, we are going to put everything together and transfer that into our CRM system. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate it on HubSpot. So I'm going to search for HubSpot and in the event section, we are going to create a new contact. So I'm going to search for that one, creates a contact in HubSpot. I'm going to then continue. You want to connect your HubSpot once again with credentials. I have already done that, so I'm going to continue. And right now, very important step is that you want to put all the variables into the appropriate fields. So then they show up in your HubSpot. But in this case, as you are aware, we are summarizing the inquiry with ChatGPT. So this must have its own column. I also thought that it would be very beneficial to have a source column. But in this case, I'm going to show you how you can create the properties. So then you can create these two columns. You want to go to settings over here and then under the data management, you want to go to properties. And in this case, you want to create a new property. The object type is going to be contact because we are creating a new contact. Then in the group, you want to choose contact activity. And in the label, you want to name your column where you are going to store the inquiry summary. So in this case, I'm just going to name it AI inquiry summary. This is going to be the name of your column. You can add description if you want to. You then want to click on next. In this step, you have to decide on your field type. So you want to go to the section other and choose rich text. The difference between rich text and the single line text is that the rich text actually allows you to store longer sentences. You then get a preview how it's going to look like. But in this case, you can just hit create and you have successfully created your property. Now, I thought it would be nice to have the source as well. So I'm going to create a new property once again. I'm going to choose contact as an object, then contact activity and then label. I'm just going to write down type form source. I'm going to hit next. And then in the field type, I'm going to choose single checkbox. This is going to generate a default option for you, which is going to be a binary variable, yes or no, which in this case, is exactly what we want. So I'm going to hit next and then you can leave this on default and we're going to create. We're going to go back to our homepage and here's where we are going to see the leads coming in. So we want to set up a default preview. I'm going to hit edit columns. In this case, you can right now search for your property. So I'm going to search for AI inquiry summary. I'm just going to drag it just right next to the message. Then I'm going to search for type form source. I'm going to add that over here and I'm going to place it right next to the email. I'm going to hit apply. And right now we can go back to our 
Zapier. And the first thing here in the action when you are using your HubSpot is that after you create your properties, you want to scroll all the way down and find the section called additional properties to retrieve. As you can see, these are the properties or the name of the columns that are mapped over here in this action. But because we created custom ones, we want to also include those here. So I'm going to go inside the additional properties to retrieve and I'm going to search for AI inquiry summary that we have just created, which is over here, contact activity, AI inquiry summary. I'm going to add that one. I'm going to search for the second one, which is type form source. I'm going to add that one. As you have seen, it was refreshing the fields automatically, but I'm going to just refresh them once again to just make sure that they appear. And right now, when you scroll up, we have all the fields ready so we can add all the variables directly inside them. So as you can see, we have just added the AI increase summary. So we have successfully retrieved it and we can right now go here and go inside our chat GPT conversation. And we are going to scroll down and find the reply, which is basically our summary. So I'm going to add that one over here. Now we are going to find the first name. And right now, remember, we don't want to add the full name over here because in HubSpot, they are separated into the first name and last name. We want to go into our formatter by Zapier action where we have them stored. So I'm going to click on that one and in the first name i'm going to choose the first name and then in the last name i'm going to choose the last name then we're going to find our email so this one is also in our type form trigger in the country field you are going to find out that you have the option to pre-select the country so here what you want to do is to go to custom and once again go to the type form here just remember that the country names have to be the same as they appear in hubspot once again in the number of employees you have some default options over here so you want to make sure to replicate these ones in your questions in your type form as well. So they are exactly the same. You want to go to custom, new entry, and then search for the company size question. And then I'm going to add the industry. In this case, it would be technology. You also want to add your message. So we are going to go to trigger and put that variable over there. Don't forget that you have also created a new property named type form source. So in this case, you can choose a static value because whenever someone fills out this form, we know that it will always come from type form as a source. So you want to choose yes. And just like that, we mapped all the fields. So let's continue. And right now we are going to test this action, whether it's going to successfully deliver all the necessary information into our HubSpot. So I'm going to test this step. I'm going to go to my HubSpot and refresh the page. And yeah, it works. So we have all the necessary information from our type form, as you can see over here. But let's check out the additional two properties that we created. So that is our type form source over here. It was correctly identified as yes. As you can see, it's a binary option. So it's either yes or no. And then right next to our message that the prospect left on our form. We also have the new column AI inquiry summary. If I hover over it, Thomas wants information about pop-up slant service and pricing options. And if I click on that one, you can see that this is how the rich text field looks like. There's a lot of space for text to be added. All right, so the last thing is that you want to name your tab. I'm going to name it as type form formatter chat GPT and HubSpot, make it easy to understand which apps I'm using here. And then you simply just publish it over here or in this corner over here, and you are ready to start collecting your leads and transferring them with the AI summary as well as the type form source field directly inside your HubSpot account. If you want to know how to write effective prompts inside Zapier when you are using your ChatGPT blog, go and check out the first link in the description down below where I put together a completely free no junk resource that has already helped a lot of people to write prompts inside Zapier. I explained how you can do that with the 3P framework. So make sure to check that out. You are going to find other resources down below as well. And if you are interested in four different AI automations for your social media, then definitely go and check out this video over here where I show you examples as well as how you can automate your social media accounts with AI. All right, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.